Hello, I'm Ron Soyland. Um, this is part five of uh, making of a Fleming valve tube. Um, this time we're going to start with the getter and we're going to put the tube together, seal it up and pull a vacuum on it. For the getter, what we do is we take an old tube. This is an old damper tube and it has a modern getter in it, uh, getter ring. I'm just going to break it open and we'll take the getter out of it and it still has enough getter material on the ring to work. I mean when they flash these they don't flash them down until they're completely empty. So we'll have enough getter material left on that ring to use. Now I'm going to go ahead and break it open. And we'll just take that getter and break it off of here. Okay, the rest of it is junk. Okay, and that's our getter. Now look at it with the magnifying glass to make sure that it is. Okay, it looks like it has plenty of getter material left in it. So that's going to be our getter. Now we'll fasten a little piece of wire onto it. Okay. Now, I'm going to put it on this side over here, aiming downwards. Okay, so I'm just going to bend that wire like that. Right in there. Get a good juice on that. Get another one just to make sure. There we go. Okay, now that gives us our getter, okay, and then this will fit, hopefully. Alright, next thing to do is to seal it up. Okay, we have the tube mounted in a lathe. We took the base and mounted it in the wire holder and the envelope and we mounted it in the other chuck. And yeah, you know, we can now rotate it and do whatever we need to do and it holds the pieces exactly aligned. Trying to do that without the lathe would be quite a trick. Alright, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to seal the bottom. Now to do that, we're going to go ahead and heat it up a little bit first with the annealing torch so we don't crack anything. Once we get the base sealed, then we'll go ahead and seal the side feed through. Alright, we're starting to flare so we can go ahead and do our heat. 
I'm going to heat it up good so that we don't um, have it cool off while we're in the middle of it. Now we'll take a small carbon tool and I'm just going to heat up the point on the thing, press the glass together, seal it. And I'm just going to work around just making a weld on the glass. Push it together with a tool. It's actually easier to weld glass than it is metal. Now, we're going to clean this up a little bit. I'm going to put the pressure hose, use a little piece of uh, adapter tubing and put the pressure hose onto the fill stem. And I'm just going to heat it and put a little pressure just to round it off to make it look really nice. Go ahead and even out the heat a little bit here. Make sure there's no stress in the glass as it cools. Okay. Now, that gets the base of the tube sealed up. That's a hermetic seal now. Next, we have to do this side seal. Now to do that, I'm going to warm it up, warm the glass up till it's molten, and then I'm going to grab it with the pliers and I'm just going to kind of work it in a circular motion to where it causes the bead to touch the glass of the envelope all the way around and stick to it. And then once it's stuck onto it, then I'll go ahead and uh, clean it up. Now first we have to heat the, heat the thing up very carefully so that we don't crack the envelope. And go ahead and use the uh, annealing torch. Just going to warm that envelope up good so that uh, when we're working on it, there's no chance of cracking it. Because Pyrex or not, if you put the heat concentrated in one small area, you know, you can make a crack. I've had it happen before. But by heating the whole thing up to, you know, somewhere near a thousand degrees or so, you get near the um, annealing point and uh, the glass won't, any, won't crack anymore after that. All right, we're starting to flare, so we're at the annealing point. Okay, now, what I'm going to do is just start heating up this area until it's molten. Okay, just wiggling it around. Okay, we got one side completely done. Now let me get the other side. And the back. Looks good. That's all it takes to seal it. And 
just take that down just real slowly there in temperature just a little bit. Really not any chance of it cracking. Okay. There's our tube. Completely sealed off. See, we still don't know if this is a perfect seal or not. We're going to find out when we hook it to the vacuum system. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we'll connect the tube onto the vacuum system. To do that, we'll just remove this uh, connector here. Slip it onto the evacuation stem. Put our O-ring on there. Put a little bit of vacuum grease on it to make sure it seals good. Okay, we just slip that onto there. When we tighten it down, the O-ring squishes down around the glass and holds it. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and test this side for a leak. To do that, we have a handheld spark coil that generates a uh, high voltage spark. And we'll pull a vacuum on the, on the tube. And if we've got a crack in the glass, the spark will jump through the crack and we'll, we'll know that we've got a leak. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and open the roughing valve. We're now pumping down the tube. It'll take only a few seconds. Okay, we have a leak. Okay. See how the spark jumps to that point? Okay, we're going to have to reheat the glass and seal that point because we do have a leak. So what I'm going to do is close the roughing valve, remove the tube, put it back in the uh, glass lathe and uh, reheat that point. This happens. It's no big deal. It's routine. If we were using soft glass, that would be a disaster. We probably would not be able to reheat this without putting it in an oven. But by using Pyrex, we can reheat that spot and seal it in just a matter of seconds.